Okay, so okay. intro, um, welcome episode, uh, <laughs> welcome episode, listener. Welcome episode. <laughs> welcome listeners to the 12th episode of Two Facet Podcast. Um, I'm Mateusz Mikulski, product manager. I'm here today with Hunkal. Hey, I am Hunkal. I'm product designer. And I'm the other co-host. Yeah, yes, <laughs> exactly. Uh, so we are hosting this this podcast, and every time we have an episode, we have a topic. Exactly. Uh, this time it's forming, storming, performing, and norming. Yes, which most of the people <laughs> I don't know. I and maybe a lot of people have has, hasn't heard about it, but it's basically about teams. Yes, right? it, it is how teams um, form, and then how we can help or understand in which stage our team is and then what is happening with the team or maybe push a team a bit better mm -hmm. like a bit more into like performing better to help them out basically not really pushing <laughs> not <the laughs> don't push word. people no. yeah, yeah you shouldn't be. Yeah. yeah because basically so in the team we have uh different people yes normally with different uh skills and the way they collaborate and they work together um can depend on the success of the project, yes. right? Yes, actually, you know, um, I would say that when you want to find the difference between better and less performing teams, a lot of times it's just gonna be like how the people collaborate, like how they work with each other. And, and it's not that you found the best framework. It's mm -hmm. like, is the relationship within, between those people, like work agreement, that's mm -hmm. not necessarily written, but it's like, are they really performing or they're just, you know, task takers and trying to, to do the stuff? Yes. And these, I guess when they really are able to perform and collaborate well, these are the so-called high performing teams, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And, and you can see them. Those are the people that a lot of times have their own dictionary. So they have their own ways of communication that mm -hmm. is just quick, easy and the most optimal for the set of people. So some of them going to... An easy uh, example is like sometimes team drop dailies in Scrum, no? Uh-huh. And then they decide to do something else like write-ups or do weekly or whatever because that's better version of the communication for them that enables them to perform better. So, yeah, communication is important there too. Also. Yes. Um, so then why some teams reach that level? Why some others they don't? And there's like... An evolution and, and a way to get there yeah. right it's an evolution and and funnier part is actually it's not linear so mm -hmm. i would say the team or individual members or sub teams in the team sometimes can be in you know the synchronized moments so it's uh -huh. like you may have performing team and then new role joins so then you need some time to accumulate um, like all of the stress and, and, and uh, the storm that can happen inside this team. Mm -hmm. Not that people are gonna be like having fights. It's more <laughs> that uh, we recently had something like this. So uh, product analyst joined our team full time, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then we needed to find ways for him to be performing, meaning like he can feel like he's adding value to whatever we are building as a team. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's not that hey new person so let's rebuild the whole flow again it's it was also like trying to you know form how this person can fit in into the process into how the team collaborates and and how we produce things mm -hmm. um, so then you know um, parts of the team were maybe not that high performing because trying to find the ways to, how mm -hmm. to accommodate new role and, and then be faster or better at the delivery at the end of the day but yeah yes so you have a group of people and depending on the situation they can evolve differently as well yeah. so there are these stages right of yeah. um of the teams um yeah from yeah. when they are born until they are high performing yeah, yeah right yeah, yeah. And, and then sometimes you know they're ending so you can also do post-mortem at this as this stage yeah yeah so so as you as you said there's four stages actually this framework was developed in 1960 uh, by the psychologist Bruce Tuckman um, and yeah he names like four stages of evolution of a team as forming storming norming and performing so those are the four stages we've been spoiling mm -hmm. a bit right <laughs> now uh, here um, then maybe we can go through them what do you yeah. think about this yeah exactly so okay. 
I guess we start from the beginning. Yeah. Uh, the so, team just so, so forms. So this is why it's called forming, right? Because yeah, exactly. we form a team. We take different people with different skills and we put them together. And yeah. they may not know each other. They may have some previous relationship in the work. They may not know each other. They probably are coming from different backgrounds. Especially, you know, it is 2021. We are living in a world where a lot of work is remote first. So a lot of companies are doing worldwide recruitments. So then, you know, you will have actually different backgrounds, different mm -hmm. cultures and, and, and all of this diversity coming. So, yes, you are burning, the, burning like the team is burn, born, born, <laughs> yes, born. It's born. <laughs> it's born. Um, and, and this is the forming stage. So you have different people. They not necessarily know how to work with each other. Uh, the mission can be fuzzy. So there's not something to depend on or and everybody may have a bit different interpretation of what the mission statement is and what you're trying to achieve um, mm -hmm. so, yeah. so, so this is this first moment of the you know it's like born starts and probably people are super positive and super polite yes yes right? of course like the people, beginning. <laughs> yes everybody likes everybody and, and yeah everybody tries to be helpful um i hope this is the case in majority of the of the teams sometimes you also have which is funny, sometimes you're going to have even over polite people. So, you know, you're going to have those people that are going like, to tell you five times that they respect you and, and let's see how it's going to work. But yeah, it's, the, the feelings are usually um, positive, but then sometimes you can feel this anxiety of like unknown future. Uh -huh. You are kind of like, you know, uh, like in Star Trek. So you're in the spaceship sent to God knows where that no human ma being was there before and you need to find stuff so <laughs> and then you don't even know yet what stuff is or how you're gonna be work with working with your co-workers or what's actually your role so how can you contribute to the whole mission uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, I believe this can bring anxiety to some people too um, especially in young teams when you have if people are working for the first time in like um, uh, multidisciplinary team like a product team where you have designers mm -hmm. maybe some UX researchers or UX designers or any other role that we have nowadays in IT it can be like you know um, stressful like okay but I am be doing research and there's like five developers how am I gonna give them anything so, mm -hmm. so, so. I'm here but I still don't know my place yeah. here yeah Maybe we can relate all these stages to the project we did. Yes. Uh, video consultation. It was actually during the pandemic when yeah. we were all sent home for a lockdown. And then um, as a company, we wanted to like help out doctors in the healthcare that we work in. Um, so we decided to build the video consultations. Yeah. And for that, we had to super quickly build a new team just for that. Yes and well i was in that team and i remember at the beginning like it, it was it was like a lot of excitement okay. because well we're contributing to this this is this new project and we're contributing to the situation um yeah but a lot of unknowns because i didn't know everyone from the team it yeah. was yeah the one thing was that yeah the team was constructed from different product teams that, that we could <laughs> find uh it's even bigger scam so you were working in, in the video but then we had like other parts of the product suit also being done in parallel with, with different teams. And then the problem that especially was in the video, I would say like none of us knew what we we're going to build. Like, yes, we knew we want to attack video. And that means like a lot of stuff. Like if you look at, um, at Zoom, mm -hmm. you will find like a lot of features. Um, if you look at around, same, a lot of features. Skype don't even start with the number of features. So. When looking at the product like this, saying like, hey, let's build something in three weeks, you're like, mm, but what to build really? And there were those discussions in the team too, of mm -hmm. like, shall we integrate? Shall we build our own? Shall we just, I don't know, run? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with a bit of uncertainty and, and anxiety. And, and a lot of questions too. So mm -hmm. it is this, this stage where people ask a lot of questions, not yes. always around the mission, not all of them going to be productive, but it's like you're setting up your ground, you're scouting mm -hmm. what's possible, what's not, who are the people and why we are here again. Can you explain this second time? Just, you know, to process everything. Like we all need to figure things out together at the beginning. Yeah. So, yeah. So we were forming the team. Yes. And once the team is formed and the people 
kind of already start working together yeah. what happens we kind of move to the second stage yeah right? and then so you have the team you're gonna have your framework that's gonna be scrum kanban shape up whatever um and then there's gonna be initial friction so conflict's gonna appear maybe not people again screaming at each other but some of like frictions in some of the places of a team uh, the process may be not the best fit for some of the team members or for majority and things like this and then you know scrum has retros and this constant improvement of the process so you should be looking at it so frameworks sh shall guide you where to do and uh, to improve uh, but it's super again it's super natural that hey okay we start working and then oh, oh we have disagreements about no I, I do believe we should use this technology or no, I want designs before I start development because I want to have super well-defined opinion like tasks. Yeah. Those are the standard discussions you start hearing from the teams uh, when, when they're storming. And it's like, oh, but it, why this person is not delivering me this? Or uh -huh. how could we improve this so it will be uh, faster? Or I will need to do less, all of those. or. Why am I doing daily if I don't have anything to tell to you every day? I have something every two days. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's classic from, from any team I was running. So. Yeah, you start uh, working and then you start encountering, well, the, the points where people kind of yeah. don't agree on them. Um, in uh, the case of the video consultation, yeah. 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 Uh, so for instance, design was... Um, the thing is that normally up to then, we would be working first on the design and when we had clear what to do, then we moved to development. But we were in pandemic and we had to run super fast. So we wanted to start doing something and there was no design. So that was one of the first things of yeah, stress, like how do we do this? And developers were asking for the design and there was no design. So that was a big, yeah. Especially they were used to like really high fidelity designs. Uh -huh, like, uh -huh. You know, the designs you've been producing to that point were basically all of the flaws with all of Everything the actions. Everything defined, like, yeah. Basically, you have a front end, just let's take it from Figma, put it to, to view, and it's going to be amazing. Uh, and then with the pandemic, well, as I started, we didn't knew yet what we want to build or how to incorporate that in the product. So Yeah, so that was one of the, of the things. And as well, as you said, there were like other teams that were working connectedly. Yeah. And, and we can feel like there was lack of information in a way, right? There was other teams and we didn't know what was going on. So that created friction yeah. as well. On management level, we were also like this at that moment. So there were... So initially we started, you know, synchronization all of the teams that, okay, we have the roadmap in mind, let's, let's go with it. We set like super short goals and then we said, okay, MVPs and after MVPs we will be improving it. Uh, and we were all agreeing, but then when it came to development and actual work, yeah, ton of stuff. No, okay. One of the uh, ideas could be like, hey, we should have chat inside the video call. Mm -hmm. Yes, but chat first needs this and this is connected to that team and then that team says like, no, we will be building something else because <laughs> stuff. And then, oh, no, no. And then, you know, PMs also needed to face this problem, talk to, to the teams or to each other and try to trade off or change their roadmap. Uh, but yeah, we were also like not knowing yet how to collaborate on that scale with this number of teams. Storming at all levels, yeah. I would say, yeah, yeah, at yeah, that yeah. moment. Yeah, at that moment yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. So it can happen not only like, you know, inside the team, team per se that develops, but on, yeah, we were people that knew each other already, but we were not working that closely and collaborating, mm -hmm. you know, five or six teams at the same time, day to day. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> it's different that you talk with your colleague about managing a team, but it's a bit different when you can't manage six of them. And mm -hmm. then it's, it's, it's getting mm -hmm. trickier. Yeah, and also we another change we did, it was that normally it's like one designer for a few developers in the same project. And now, since it was super urgent and there was like a lot of work, we had two designers. And we had to start figuring that out because we never did yeah. that, like working in pairs. And and then, yeah, it's, it's also hard to depend. To, to, th this is the moment when people are starting, you know, to challenge the roles and the positions and how mm -hmm, they mm -hmm. contribute or how to contribute, as, as you said. So two designers designing the same screen does not make sense. So how exactly. to divide it to not over overproduce. So who take what, how do we communicate and share things? So, so everything. Yeah. And in this process, in this moment, you know, all of the stuff that we are using daily in our practices. So retros, 
Mm -hmm. straight feedbacks like being transparent to everybody but also trying to be inclusive like yes trying to even if you have wild ideas from some of the team members trying to go through them with the team so hey we can always meet uh, and talk and and try to Mm -hmm. improve how we work why we work in a certain way so if this makes sense or not doesn't make sense so with all these things you're saying the team starts moving to the norming right yeah yeah so so the third third stage is called norming um and this is the moment when the team actually gets to the point when they start working so they start Uh feeling hey we know what to do like Mm -hmm. okay we have some processes they may be not working super well uh but it's the team is much more flexible at that moment and much more inclusive so the people Mm -hmm. are taking like thinking about others other people and you know there's some emotions starting to create i would say like meaning like at this stage when you leave the team you're gonna probably be gonna set a bit Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, like oh mm -hmm. i left my team and things like this because you're starting to be this normed team yeah this feeling of i belong here in a way as well Yeah, 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 yeah 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 from product i would say also that the team at that moment starts seeing that how they contribute to the problem they're solving Mm-hmm. So, you know, at the forming stage, you have a guy that comes to you and says like, hey, our mission is to fix the healthcare in times of pandemic. Let's build video consultation. And I'm like, yeah, guy, sure. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, fine, fine, fine. Then turning the, uh, the uh, storming, we were actually shipping the MVP. So we mm-hmm. were like, let's build something fast, give it to the customers, try find the feedbacks and then figure out how we can not die in the longer term because MVP is just the first step. And then in norming, we were actually, you know, already closing the the, the feedback loop. So the next items in the backlog or roadmap started being much clearer because we Mm -hmm. started having customers and understanding, okay, so if we do this, this kind of people are gonna get help. If we do that, this kind of people starts getting, getting help. So choosing between them as we do in a team, being tr- as much democratic as possible um this, this this helps a lot and the team has this feeling of okay we are solving those problems and we know mm-hmm. our mission and we know how we're gonna arrive there more mm-hmm. or less. Mm-hmm. yeah so yes we were kind of solving the problem so regarding this problem of not having the design first we started working more more lean ux so deciding all the team, well, with the developers at least, together, yeah. uh, the UX solution on a high level, and then more like working in parallel and communicating more with the UI kit. So instead of I'm giving you like a full final design, let's discuss yeah. which components are we going to use so the developer can can start working. Uh, as well, we figure with the collaboration in Figma how to collaborate to designers and we divided the areas and everything. So yeah, we were fixing things. And as you said, we already had doctors. Yeah. Uh, so we had the first feedbacks. And since we already started having this uh, feeling of belonging, yeah. we gave a name to the team as well. Yeah. yeah, actually at that moment we were the office team, yeah, because we were the doctor offices at the time. So yeah, because yeah, the of- yeah we were the office. Yeah, we so were the doctor office. We were already belonging. That's and that's true. That's true. Um, yeah, and you you start seeing also here some improvement in speed. So uh-huh. it's like not trying to do performance uh, metrics, but it's more. Initially, you will see the team is producing something, but you may feel like, hey, this is the slowest team I worked with. <laughs> experienced product manager, you shouldn't say that, but. You will come and say like, "Hey, my last team was like ten times faster." Like, yeah, any of those developers would be faster. I bet, like, I challenge that because if you bring two of those the fastest developers, they're still gonna be a bit slower in the mm-hmm, new form mm-hmm. team. It's just you cannot do I, I unless you're you know this alone wolf, but that's maybe not the best person or profile to put inside the team. Um, then storming doesn't happen and that, like doesn't help you. But I would say norming, you start seeing like, oh, the team is getting faster mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. you see uh s- things are getting shipped faster or problems are getting solved faster and you spend less time on talking on like how but you have much more why mm-hmm, mm-hmm. from the team yes yes and they basically work faster because now they know better each other they know their strengths their weaknesses so they can yeah. collaborate better yeah so 
what we keep moving faster and yes, faster you, you keep moving faster and faster uh, until there is the fourth stage that's called performing uh, and, and this is the place where majority of the high performing teams whatever high performing gonna be you for you are in um so this is this moment when you have super senior team so the team is aware of strengths weaknesses it's not a problem to just come and say like hey we cannot do that because we're losing like missing this expertise or we are not having people for that or hey those parts of the system we never worked with so we were much more confident and they are becoming like domain experts mm -hmm, of whatever mm -hmm. mission you had we are using here you know an example of a product team so then you have a longer time span of a team so after a year of working on electronic health records developers become like domain experts not only inside the code but also in the product and mm -hmm, the businesses mm -hmm. and they understand why those features were created and things like this so the performing team actually have this so they're much more aware of of this and then there is like much bigger attachment to to to, to everything what i do like to do in the practice is you know creating identity early on and then when you see performing team you have emojis in slack so <laughs> then you have a performing team the identity is there and then people are really trying to you know uh, identify with whatever the team stands for or the, the the scope they were working for yeah in video consultation i remember that at this stage we kind of were already a bit ahead yeah like yes now we have extra functionalities for the next milestone or the next thing is because we were already fast enough yeah. to yeah to and, on and those. this comes from domain expertise so i remember people like developers coming and saying like hey and those three things i already did i knew they were there but you know it was easy and i'm aware of what we are doing and where we are heading so i thought hey cheap easy i just did it we can ship it faster so people are able to prevent some of the problems also mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like when designing even like after working a bit on video you start knowing what are the most common problems where the rabbit holes what should mm -hmm, we mm -hmm. not do in order to not you know uh, generate any problems for the users how to hide some of the imperfections of technology with with some of the stuff so it's much 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 faster than yes and we were more aware already of the other teams that were connected to us yes. so whenever we needed something it was much more faster to just go ask get the information yeah. and everything so yes we were high performing <laughs> we were high performing and then the other thing that happens usually there is coincidence but you know if you're high performing you're probably gonna do like a uh, important work or the work you're gonna do gonna have bigger impact uh -huh. it's like if we connect all of the dots it's if you have a lot of ideas and you're high performing you you can test more ideas in a shorter periods of time so bigger chances for you to find something better or like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. be really impactful so what comes with this is like you will have a lot of times like feelings of accomplishment or being proud of the work you do because you have all of the all of the blocks now as a, as a person you know how you work you know why mm -hmm. you work this way and you're really fast and then you and this is this feeling in the shape up they they actually use this metaphor of you know having this second person that you can lock self uh, in, in a room with whiteboard and then after third hour you will be you know drawing something on the wall that only you two in that second understand mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. this is the then multiply that by team members in a team and, and this is the high performing team so you can take virtually anybody and just you know bounce this and have this like you know beautiful mind moment <laughs> with another person any person from the team Mm -hmm. in ideal world but as we said at the beginning it's also like you know changes in the team also can move the team in between the stages so. exactly like maybe new team members entering or maybe big changes yeah. in the structure or the of the company or changes in methodology yeah they all, all can stuff. influence that the team can move to be less performing like the, the team members still gonna have this mindset so it's easier so as, mm -hmm. as with the example with product analysis it's like yes the we needed to find it but at the same time we had super welcoming and inclusive team mm -hmm. of like domain experts so people were helping to to, to accommodate him and in his role so we weren't seeing like any trade-off on his speed because people knew how how they work so it's mm -hmm. easier for them to explain than hey you know we do scrum and 
the guy comes every two weeks, drops the stuff, and we go with the tasks. So yeah. talk with that guy, um, then it's a bit different. It's not that we start from a scratch yeah. all the time, but we, yeah, it's not like a fixed uh, evolution. No, no, it's, it's not that if you're performing, you're going to be there until the end of the life. No, the process is going to keep changing. People going to keep changing, even, you know, growing old changes how you see award and how <laughs> what you want and what True. you don't want. So True. starting a company, you know, early on, it, it was normal to have an office Saturday full of developers because beer and pizza and developing, that's fun. <laughs> but a lot of us are not in the early 20s anymore. So mm -hmm. we, some of us want to work differently. And this is a, like possible to do and fit all of this. But, you know, it's a process that everybody like needs to go through and then remove some of those frictions. Mm -hmm. So teams are not high performing forever and they don't exist forever. So unfortunately <laughs> they don't. Like, unfortunately, yeah. Yeah, as as everything in, in life they end missions end and then sometimes you just terminate the team. Yeah. So there was like a fifth uh stage added to the uh, yeah to the framework, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Later on. Um, and yeah, in our case, maybe not our case. So every time you're going to terminate the team, there's going to be conflict feelings and depending on like why you end the team. So if you end the team because company died, well, nobody going to be happy there. Um, so, so there's going to be feelings of uncertainty about the future and things like this. So let's say you have had the team, like we, the office, and mm -hmm. then we said like, okay, the mission is done. We have a product. It does not need like an active product in working on it. Um, so you can feel sad. You will feel like, oh, but what ha what will happen with that baby? Like, okay, uh -huh, we, uh -huh. we created that. We probably have like a backlog full of next ideas for the next two years. What's gonna happen here? So 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 all of this gonna gonna be there. I don't have any good tips actually to deliver this news, to be honest. Ah, to deliver the how, news. How to deliver that. Because one thing is like, you know, what, how the team going to feel after that. Uh, but what we did was trying to explain... The business reason, yeah, right? Yeah, and why the product. So, so basically the product was good. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, it's good. And then <laughs> we could increment that, we could work on it, but it would be like, you know, um, small increments, like super small percentage increments in already well-performing product. So we were just um, victims of our own success, I would say, in this case. <laughs> yeah, well, I think it's important to understand why now the impact can be somewhere else in the product yeah. as a bigger priority. And then it's easier to cope with the fact that the team is dissolving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. totally. And there can be as well feelings of accomplishment when it's finishing because like hey we did a great thing now it's working and we had success yeah so yeah and it's like i'm not a parent but i imagine it's similar <laughs> feeling it, or let's try to translate that into emotions it, that's why i say victims of the own success because mm -hmm. the team was like hey we had nothing now we have fully working video suit and it's it's mature enough that it can just go and, you know, do whatever it wants in the life and mm -hmm. you don't need like everybody constantly like looking at it and trying to iterate over it. So, hmm. And a good thing to do is kind of a celebration as well, no? Like, yes, yes. Like as a closing event. Yes, we and... sh you should celebrate, you should, you know, um, pay attention to give uh, recognition to everybody that worked there mm -hmm. basically mm -hmm. so everybody feels like it is not failure it is a success and you've been um, contributing to the success actively so mm -hmm. everybody should have that feeling so then the next cycle of teams gonna be a bit easier if you understand hey this may end at some moment so yeah in the case of video consultation i remember we went to a chiringuito to have some drinks yeah yeah yeah, yeah. In the <laughs> to in celebrate in between the lockdowns in between we, lockdowns so it was a moment where yeah, it, yeah. everything was open we, we broke zero lows uh, <laughs> yes. but yes 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 we, we we went to the to the bar on the beach to just mm -hmm. grab some drinks together and just meet and you know have some feeling of the accomplishment together plus it was middle of pandemic so seeing 3d people was really was, yeah, nice yeah. thing so but true, we didn't break any law. It was no, allowed. No, no, we were, we were super, super aligned to the laws. So please don't call police here. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, so we have the um, so forming, storming, norming, and performing, and then the ending. And why is it important to understand these phases? Like to know it as a framework. So, um, from management perspective, I would start is like you will feel better. Uh huh. So it's like when you start. I I, I give this example that you may get a feeling of hey. If I would have the two developers from my previous team, oh, how fast we would be! <laughs> I'm losing so much time here. It's normal. I, I, nothing more. It's it is normal. It takes time for people to shine, and whenever you have new developer joining your company, it's gonna take him six, three months before he will be shining and being an, really an expert, and you will see where he fits in the whole puzzle. Maybe faster. I don't know. Uh, but I would say it always takes time. So if you know that the stages exist and you look closely and you're aware, you can understand. So you will feel less anxious. So mm -hmm. you will feel a bit more in control of, okay, we are here. And then you have set of tools that can help you there. So mm -hmm. you may pay a bit more attention to certain parts of how the team works to help them out. You can see, okay, so we have those problems from where they're coming from, from people. Okay. Maybe we should talk with people. Are they coming from the process? Yeah. Let's change the process. Let's groom it. Let's, let's do whatever we want over the process, but you can be much more aware on how to, how to help people instead mm -hmm. of micromanaging and trying to go to everybody and things like this or other weird solutions that people may have. Uh, but yeah, being aware just gives you superpower of you can zoom out and say like hey, hey this is normal <laughs> they have a problem you are here to solve the problem help them out not to extrapolate that or be creative and bigger problem of like hey why you're talking and not working no 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 they need to work they need to talk to you if you fail like two sprints at the beginning super like okay people are learning you need to give them this this space but you need to be aware not everybody mm -hmm. gonna be in this can create frustration I would say it's also important for the team members mm -hmm. to understand them uh, as well to understand what's going on. So probably in the storming phase, you are working with people you don't know and maybe you can think, oh, these are jerks. They don't yes. think like me. They do things differently. So if you understand these phases, you can take a step back and say, okay, this is absolutely normal. It's not that the other person is it's a jerk, jerk or yeah. doesn't understand me or so stupid. We just need to find uh, a way for us to work together. We need to, I don't know, find more flexibility yeah. or whatever. So it helps you go through the process of knowing each other and finding a way together. And you will um, know also in the vice versa situation that it's like not you. It's, it's not, not your you. fault. Yeah, like, as well. Because yeah. you can get like, you know, you can have a situation when it's one versus the team and it's like, why am I so bad or no one is it's, understanding it, me. Yeah, no yeah. one gets me. I'm super. So it's not you. Yeah. It, it's normal. They don't each other. Then don't understand each other. Too. Maybe some worse people will find like a common ground as you as a target. But it's not the point. It's 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 not you. It's it's super normal for new people. Yeah, and it helps you as a team member to move to the next stages yeah. as well. Uh, yeah, in the finishing one as well, like. Am I being too much emotional? Who is this? Why is this happening to me? No, is this, no no, this is this normal. normal? You now belong, so it's a normal feeling. So yeah, it's useful for everybody to, to yeah, understand yeah. it. Yeah, and feel free to, you know, cry sometimes, send <laughs> like a broken heart emoji, like that's super normal. And actually I would say it helps other people. So I'm, I, I know I'm saying a lot about help, but imagine you're in storming or you're in determination, like any, positive feelings you see from other members mm -hmm. just help you out it's like you see again that it's not only you other people are also heartbroken or other people are also pissed off maybe they're pissed off about different reasons <laughs> but you at least yeah. get can get some common ground like okay we all hate our product owner fine cool <laughs> amazing you at least have one goal and from there we can work it out like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but but getting this one one idea is, is really crucial there yeah so yes um that's actually all of what <laughs> yes. we had in our notes uh we hope this is gonna help you out in the journey to to be high performing teams and how to create ones maybe not how to create ones but being aware again helps you out to to manage the stages 
Exactly. And if you find it interesting and you think someone else might benefit from this episode, share it. Um, yes, leave the thumbs up button under the video on YouTube. Um, <laughs> we are also on Spotify. Um, you can go to anchor.fm slash facet and you will see all of the links to Spotify and other podcast platforms. You can also find us at Twitter at Facet Podcast. And we have an email with twofacetpodcast at gmail.com. Exactly. So, yeah. Thank you very much and have a nice day. Thank you. you. Bye. Bye.